Homer's a quirky little town. <laughs> we live in a postcard. Our community's great. They do anything for each other. It's just a good place to be. Kind of like a really dynamic community. People who really appreciate the place that we live in and the community that we're building together. It's a great little community. We get along with each other. And I wandered in 22 years ago and just never left. Looking out at glaciers and all the wildlife, I think it's one of the most beautiful places on the planet that's livable. Alaska in general and Homer specifically certainly have not disappointed. This place is gorgeous. I'm spending three days here. I'll try to give you a sense of this place and some of the people who live here. Most of the visit has exceeded my expectations. At least one of the most hype spots, however, was a huge disappointment. Keep watching for all of that. The highlight of the stay in Homer was getting out on Kachemak Bay. Traveling with my niece Heather and her husband Jeff, we chose a wildlife tour from Rainbow Tours. Just seeing the area from the water provides a different perspective. Out of the harbor and onto the bay, it was a seven-hour excursion, which provided some of the most incredible scenery imaginable. Our captain navigated through the bay and provided commentary along the way. It looks like how common you are. She attempted to find marine wildlife for us, and there were plenty of sightings of sea otters. Most of the activity, however, came as we circled the Gull Island Bird Rookery. Several varieties of birds nest there through the spring and summer. Puffins seem to be the favorites of most of those on the cruise. After more amazing scenery, including glaciers and islands and faraway volcanoes, we arrived in the small village of Seldovia. It is accessible only by boat or plane. Seldovia was once a much more thriving community, but the land subsided during the Great Earthquake of 1964. Now only several hundred people live here full time. It's a gorgeous place though, and when combined with a cruise through the Kachemak Bay, makes for a wonderful way to spend the day. It was awesome. We yeah. had phenomenal weather. It was a great day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to see some wildlife. We chose to spend our time at Seldovia by hiking the Otterbaum Trail. The path went up and down hills through the maritime forest of the island. It was nothing too challenging, and the summer colors of Alaska were on vibrant display. The hike in Seldovia was a lot of fun. It was great. It was a little muddy, but it ended at a beautiful beach. The trail was roughly a mile each way and ended at Outside Beach. This is the payoff for a hike over the Otterbahn Trail, a little cove, gravel beach, some impressive rocks both on and off the coast, and cold, clear water. It's pretty magical. Those visiting the beach included some kids on a field trip and other passengers from our cruise. This is, I'm from Houston, Texas, and I am from Utah. Uh, California. California as well. Mm -hmm. We took the ferry today to come to this beautiful location and our aunt told us about this awesome hike and it's gorgeous. Yeah, what about the trail and what about what you found here at the end of it? Well, it was very green and beautiful. We didn't have any bear sightings, even though we were ready. We yeah. were ready. <laughs> there had been reports of a mother bear in a cub or two on the trail recently, but no interactions like that on this day. Most claimed the trip to outside beach and back was worth the time and minimal effort. It's kind of the best of both worlds for us because it's the mountains and the beach, so we love it. The beach was beautiful. Yeah, it was gorgeous. There were rocks, there, were, there was sea glass. And... I think it was a good value. Yeah, I agree. We camped in a spot that was close to downtown Homer. A short walk from the camper to the beach revealed this early morning view. Absolutely stunning. Also a short walk away was one of the places that I liked most, the Old Town section of Homer. The Bunnell Street Arts Center was quite special. We're in the Old Town District. This building used to be a mercantile shop. 
We are a nonprofit. We are in year 29 of being here and we have been founded by artists and we're still centered around artists in Alaska. There was art inside and out in Old Town. There were also a couple of really delicious places to eat. One of those was the Wild Honey Bistro. They invited me into the kitchen area where the chef was preparing some of the most incredible looking crepes that I have ever seen. We do sweet and savory crepes and we do it with a um, Alaskan flair. We try to highlight things that can be foraged or harvested in Alaska. The place was operating near capacity as I stopped in near lunchtime. It's pretty popular. We've increased our business year after year. We're st we've started our seventh summer and usually there's a line out the door. Just down the street, Two Sisters Bakery was in the midst of the lunch rush as well, but one of the owners still took a moment to say hello. The story of this place is a story of a love for baking. We were baking together and it's a long story, honestly. It's been going on for 30 years. I don't know, we just can't stop baking. We would probably go home and bake even if we weren't selling it, so we might as well sell it. <laughs> we got several treats here, but the chocolate bread didn't even make it off of the property. Love it. How could you go wrong? It's bread, it's chocolate. Perfect. Old Town provided lots of pleasures for all of the senses. It's a must visit if you find yourself in Homer. This is my favorite part of town. I love Old Town and Bishop's Beach. We really like our town and we think it should have nice places, so everybody's got a picture. I'll mention a couple of other places that I enjoyed. I got my morning coffee at Captain's Coffee Roasting Company. Well, we are Homer's original roasting company. We uh, have been here for 27 years now. Family run operation and we're just a small coffee shop. That's what we do. This is a place where the same people spend their morning here just about every day. We've thought about leaving two or three times, but when we come over Baycrest, there's this sigh when you see the spit and you're always like, well, we're finally back to Homer. When you're in Captain's Coffee Roasting Company, don't forget to look up. There are all sorts of colorful panels. At the other end of the day, I discovered two local breweries. One afternoon, we stopped by the Homer Brewing Company. The next, we stopped into Grace Ridge Brewing Company. Both provided tasty and cold drinks. Thanks to Heather and Jeff for indulging me when they would have probably liked to be elsewhere. One morning, we explored the Visitor Center for the Alaska Maritime National Wildlife Refuge. The refuge needs a place like this as it is spread over thousands of miles and millions of acres. It stretches from Barrow through the Gulf of Alaska and all along the Aleutians. The Visitor Center was established so our visitors could see the history of the refuge, what the biologists are doing out there. If you were to look at the 48, lower 48 state, our refuge stretches from Georgia to California all the way up to North Dakota. So it's very, very, very large refuge. From the Visitor Center parking lot, there is access to the Beluga Slough Trail. It's a short and easy walk through the slough and out to Bishop's Beach. Definitely worth spending a little time to get out among this slice of nature, which provides access to wildlife and spectacular views. It was a short drive to one of Homer's most famous attractions, the Homer Spit. That drive provided lots of hope for what was to come out on the four and a half mile piece of land that juts out into the bay. Some parts I liked, some I didn't. On the good side of things was the connection to the thriving fishing industry in Homer. Anglers surrounded the banks of what is known locally as the fishing hole. Um, what do you catch here? Uh, king salmon, silver salmon, uh, those are the main species. In the short time I spent at the fishing hole, there were quite a few fish pulled from the water. How much fun is this, just coming out here seeing what you can do? Uh, scale 1 to 10, 10. It's a lifestyle. People come from all over to try their luck at this spot. Many times, they are successful. How much fun is it coming out to a place like this? Oh my gosh, it's amazing. It's one of a kind. Yeah. yeah? One of a kind. You can find people preparing their catch at a station near the fishing hole. It's bones are sharp. Close to the harbor and restaurants on the spit, others take on the task of cleaning fish on a much larger scale. To see the full scope of the fishing industry here, I stopped by the Homer Fish Processing Facility. They asked that I stay out of the main processing area, but one of the employees was kind enough to take my camera with her 
and give a glimpse into the way things work at this place. It was quite an operation. The spit is an impressive geographic feature, and the scenery from the edge of the water can be astonishing. Overall, though, the shops and restaurants created an atmosphere like many other locations that cater to tourists. Many people say that visitors must stop at the Salty Dog Saloon. The tiny place does have a history with a long-standing tradition of dollar bills attached to the walls and ceiling. I'm sure some people get a kick out of the saloon, but it wasn't for me. I can say the same for much of the Homer Spit. I did enjoy a stop at the Homer Farmer's Market as it was a great place to meet some people who live in the area. Crystal was selling homemade jewelry. It's wonderful creating things that have a special part of myself and sharing them with the world. And Reuse the shed. Julian has developed his own business, Artistic Blades, in which he does everything except forge the actual blade. People love them. They just make for great art pieces and, you know, they're really usable as well. It teaches me a very nice life skill. I like the fact that I get to be an entrepreneur this young. I'm only 16, so I'm very young compared to most of the people that do this craft. There's an interesting story behind stone art by Claire. I came here as a mime performer <laughs> and fell in love and gave up everything. I was working out of Chicago at that time. Just gave everything away and came up here. And I've never regretted it. I've been here for like 43 years. Wooden Diamonds produces some very unique artwork. Little petroglyphs you can wear. So um, I collect beach rocks and use a mallet and chisel to cut out the design, paint the cut out and that's it. Homer's great. It's a, you can't swing a cat without hitting an artist around here. The Alaska Garlic Project is certainly an unusual concept. Grow and sample garlic to see if we can acclimatize it to Alaska. And then I'll sell seed to other Alaskan gardeners so that they don't have to import their seed from the lower 48. And there's a lot going on with what the Wild Wellness Farm is doing. Connecting people to nature through food production. Markets such as this provide a window into the community in which they are located. Homer is a foodie town. We really love supporting local businesses. It's a great place to be an entrepreneur. It's a great place to grow food. We have an amazing climate. Yeah, it's all around incredible. It was a fun and packed three days in Homer. I hit Homer at just the right time. Locals say that these conditions in mid-July provided some of the first summer-like days of the year. I might not be as lucky next time. I'm on the sewer, but the forecast calls for rain for the entire time that I'll be there. Tune in next time to see how it goes.